B'Shem Hashem Na'asev and Asliyah. Welcome everyone to our Zerah Shimshon weekly shiur on the parasha. Um, today's shiur has been dedicated and sponsored for the refu'ah shalema of Meir ben Ehteram. May he have a refu'ah shalema, refu'at ha-nefesh, refu'at ha-guf in the zikhut of the Zerah Shimshon and the learning tonight. Betoch she'ar kol chole am Yisrael. And it's uh, dedicated also for the refu'ah shalema of kol chole am Yisrael. And le'ilu'i nishmat. Immanuel ben Munavar, Shemuel ben Yibu Yoda, and Yafabat Bivijan, Nisan Haim ben Helen. Okay. Parashat Teruma, the tenth um, ot, ot Yud in the Zerah Shimshon, says as follows. Now, Parashat Teruma is the parsha that discusses the building of the different vessels that were used in the Mishkan, like the tabernacle, like the Arona Kodesh, and things like that. Tonight, we're going to be discussing the building of the Aron HaKodesh. The Aron HaKodesh that was built by Betzalel, um, the tabernacle. It was built in a special way. And the Zerah Shimshon is going to discuss kind of two sides as to why it was built this way. Here we go. In the commandment of the building of the, of the Aron, it says, Ve'asu Aron atseshitim, ve'tzibita oto zahav tahor, you shall build an aron from cedar wood, and you shall cover it with pure gold, from inside and outside you shall cover it, meaning with gold. Perash Rashi, Rashi over there says, Shalosh aronot asa Betzalel. Betzalel made three boxes. Now, how was the Aron built? Let's discuss this for a second so everyone gets a visual, visual, Yehuda, of what the Aron was. The Aron HaKodesh was a box. You know, the Aron was, was the box that had the Luchot Habrit, that had the Ten Commandments in it, right? The first tablets that were shattered and the second tablets, right, were inside the Aron that were carried in the Midbar and they were in the Mikdash. Mishkan, and then later on when the Beit HaMikdash was built, it was in the Kodesh HaKodeshim with the two angels that were, total, so to speak, golden angels that were hovering on top with their wings towards each other. Everyone get the visual? That is? Okay. So the box, bottom part, the compartment that had the Luchot in it, right, had certain measurements and it was built a certain way. Now the Torah says that Hashem told Betzalel to build it out of cedar wood, covered from inside and outside with gold. <coughs> How does Betzalel do this? Betzalel takes a box of wood, built out of wood. Then he takes one box, he makes one box out of pure gold, a little bit bigger than the wooden one. Then he makes another one out of gold, a little bit smaller than the wooden one. The smaller goes inside the wooden box, the bigger one comes on the outside of the wooden box, covering it from inside and outside with gold. Good? Did I explain that correctly? Wonderful. Some of us are too busy eating to even look up. Everyone's thinking, who is he talking about? I won't tell you. <laughs> she knows. <laughs> Okay, so that's the building of the Aron. Umakshima <coughs> olam. Thank you for this tea, I really need it. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam shehakol nihya bidvaro. Would you make this with hot water? It's hot. Okay. Umakshima <coughs> olam. And people ask, Sheim HaKadosh Baruch Hu lo tziva lo betzalel, if HaKadosh Baruch Hu did not command Betzalel, Ela la'asot aron echad shel et metzupe zahav, the only thing that Hashem told Betzalel to do was, make an aron out of wood and cover it with gold. How would you have done this? Right, you would, you would, you would basically cover the wooden box in, oh, in gold. How would you do that? Melt gold and, you know, you dip it in. I don't know how they do it where they, where they cover something with, with a material. 
כדכתיב, ועשו ארון עצי שיטים, because it says you shall make an ארון of עצי שיטים, of cedar wood. So which means the Torah is saying the ארון is made out of this wood quality, wooden box. <clears throat> and then it's covered with gold. Betzipita oto, and then you covered with with gold from inside and outside. Lama asahu shalosh aronot. Then why did Betzalel come and make three separate boxes? It's as if to say, Hashem is telling you, the aron is made out of wood. Take the wood covered with gold. What does he do? He doesn't just take wood and make a wooden box and then cover it with oh gold. He makes three boxes, one of wood. And two of gold. That's different than what it sounds like the Torah is asking him to do. Right? That's three different boxes, not one box covered with gold. Am I making the question clear? Do you understand the question? Okay. <coughs> so it says, here's how we could answer this question. Let's go into the Zer Shimshon's uh, um, Perush. The Gemara says in um, the seventh chapter of Yoma, Ain Bet Amud Bet, it says, Kol Talmid Chacham, Kol Talmid Chacham Shein Tocho Kevaro, any Talmid Chacham, which his inside is not like his outside, with meaning he's two-faced, any Talmid Chacham, which acts a certain way on the outside, but on the inside, they're... Eh, questionable, or vice versa, right? Any Talmud Chacham that on the inside he might be good, like he's got a good heart and everything, and he's got a lot of information, he's learned a lot of Torah, but on the outside, uh, you know, he'll cut you in line at Ralph's. And, or, or, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to name any, anything else, because people are going to be like, yeah. Anyway. So any Talmud Chacham that is like that, you know, you catch a Talmud Chacham at a pool hall, making bets, and actually winning the games, anybody like that, Eno Nechshav Talmud Chacham is not considered a Talmud Chacham. That's what the Gemara says. If his inside is not like his outside, or his outside is not like his inside, he's not really considered a Talmud Chacham. Shene'emar, this is what the Gemara says. Why do we know this? How do we know this? Why is it that a Talmud Chacham that's two-faced is not truly a Talmud Chacham? Because the Pasuk says, Mibayit umichut tetzapenu. The Pasuk in our, in our Parsha. Parsha says the Aron has to be covered with gold from outside and on the inside. So the Gemara from that Pasuk of the Aron, which kept the Torah inside it, resembling... What? A Talmud Chacham who is supposed to keep the Torah and teach the Torah. The Gemara learns from there, if your inside is not like your outside, if you're not truly who you are on the inside like you show on the outside, you're not truly who you say you are. You're not a Talmud Chacham. You're not truly a Talmud Chacham. How do I know? Because the Aron HaKodesh was also like that. You can turn it off now if you want. I just wanted to... Yeah. You can get from the, from the box, from the pole. Yes, yes, exactly. From the commandment of how the box needed to be built and how the pasuk, how the passage actually says it, which you will see right now. Uftzalel, <clears throat> now Betzalel, who had been given Ruach Chochmah, Betzalel had been given an extra, uh, an extra dose of Chochmah from Shamaim. Right? I say dose, everyone's thinking of the shot. Relax. Hey? It's, it's a crazy time in the world today. But he got an extra uh, 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 kedusha of information and, and chokhmah, wisdom from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to be able to exactly understand, this is the difficult part, exactly understand what God really wanted. Hashem would command him to build a certain thing and he would know exactly what God means. How to do it and how to go about doing it. That was a great thing that he had and that was a gift that Hashem gave him. He'll be able to do it and he was 13 years old by the way. Okay, What were you doing when you were 13? Don't answer that. It was a rhetorical question. Okay. Uptzalel. Betzalel knew this. Sheha Aron, that the Aron Shehu had keli shebetocho. 
genuzim haluchot. He knew that this vessel that would hold the luchot that Hakadosh Baruch Hu had given to Moshe Rabbeinu at Har Sinai and had the aseret that he brought and bear the yesod shel kol Torah and those luchot are holding the true. <coughs> Uh, they're the pillars of the entire Torah. The Ten Commandments are the pillars of the entire Torah. Therefore, that is a symbolism to a Talmud Chacham. The Aron is a symbolism to a righteous, learned, wise Jew. That's what the Aron symbolizes. Because every Chacham, every Tzaddik is supposed to be holding within itself the entire Torah. And every Talmud Chacham is truly a pillar that is holding up the world. Just like the Torah. Who do you respect more? What do you show more respect to? The Sefer Torah that's inside the Hechal or a Talmud Chacham? The answer is a Talmud Chacham. A Talmud Chacham is a living Torah. He's a living, walking Torah scroll. It's unfortunate that many people don't understand this and they don't recognize this. Right? Many people will come to Bet Knesset and they'll see a Sefer Torah, they'll jump, they will go crazy to get, a, to, to get one kiss on the Sefer Torah, which is beautiful. It's the respect that we have for our Sifrei Torah. But when it comes, unfortunately, to Talmidei Chachamim, they're very, very quick to judge and say whatever that comes out of their mouth. Ah, oh, this guy! Like it's his like, you know, first cousin. Right? And these people have put their entire life on serving Am Yisrael and learning Torah and teaching. Their, their honor is much, much greater. One time I remember somebody, out of, it was actually out of just, they were, they were simple, they didn't understand this concept. When you had the Rav of the Shul go up to say Barachat Torah, right? People stand up for the Rav of the Shul out of respect. And this person went up to, the, the Rav of the Shul went up to the Sefer Torah and a person from the Shul detest, attested, to, uh, you know, he, sorry, he, he, he did not like it. Let's put it that way. He was upset about it. He went to people and he said, I don't understand. The Sefer Torah is open. Everyone sitting down with the Sefer Torah is open. And then a man goes up, I don't care who he is, and everyone stands up for the man. That's disrespectful to the Sefer Torah. So I remember as the rabbi of the congregation one time explained this. He said, no, yeah. The rabbi of the shul gets more. A rabbi, a talmid chacham, a true talmid, gets more respect than the Sefer Torah. Yes, you stand up for the rabbi. Not for the Sefer Torah at all times even. But for the rabbi you do. Why? Because he is within himself holding the Sefer Torah. He is a walking, breathing Sefer Torah. He's the one who can not only learn, but teach and act on those mitzvot. Which one's greater? The Sefer Torah is not a living thing. The Torah is always eternal and living. That's true. But it can't, it's not teaching you. It's not doing the mitzvot. It doesn't have the mitzvot. A person does. That's what a Talmud Chacham is. Right? So he says the Aron HaKodesh symbolizes a Talmud Chacham. Umishum hachi. And because of this, Ra'a b'chokhmato. He saw in his wisdom, Betzalel we're talking about. He saw in his wisdom, He understood with his chokhmah, it's not correct to just have one box of wood and then mold gold around it. To cover it with gold, that's not enough. To have it gold plated is not really what Hashem wants. How do we know that was not really what Hashem wanted? Quite simple, really. In the Torah, when he does it the way he understood to do it, HaKadosh Baruch Hu agrees with him. That's how we know that he was correct. He understood exactly what Hashem was really commanding him to do. So he said, because the Aron has to be the symbolism to a Talmid Chacham, it can't just be a wooden box covered, plated with gold. It has to be three boxes. One of, one of wood, two of gold. Gold inside, gold outside, the wood inside. Loosely. Why? Why did he think this way? What's the chokhmah behind it? Listen, Rabbi Sai, to the Zera Shimshon. That was me trying to include everyone that is watching this year or later, that is sitting here tonight, 
I don't want to always say Rabotai. No, why not? Rabaisai. We include everybody. Hoil. <clears throat> why? Shahazahav rak tsipui hakelimhu. Gold becomes a covering of a vessel. When gold becomes the covering of a vessel, batel legabe ikarakli, it becomes secondary to the actual vessel itself. For instance, okay, you have these crock pots, right? You guys know what a crock pot is, right? Please, thank you. You make you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, like you don't know what a crockpot is. He said, "Look at the girls, not the boys. Little does he know." But Ezrat Hashem, very, very soon, when he get married, he'll know what a crockpot is, either because he'll be cooking in it, or he'll be getting hit in the head with it. Either way, <laughs> he'll know what it is. <laughs> So, you know, like the crock pots are made out of, what material is it made out of? It's, it's clay. It's, it's clayware, right? Or, or, huh? No, it's not metal. The, the, inner, the inner part. The inner part, the, these are metal. These are metal, yes. But the ones for home, the good ones that you use for home, are all clay inside. But the clay is always covered with a layer of glass. It's plated with a layer of glass. This is what, by the way, this is why halachically there's a safek whether they need to go to the mikveh or not. Because clay, you don't need to make, take the mikveh. But since they're covered by some glass, you might need to. So the chachamim say, it's best to take it to mikveh, don't make a bracha on it. Right? Just a side note, sayal, you know. But it's covered with glass. Now, what material is this crock pot made out of? Clay! You're not going to say glass. You didn't say glass. Did you think to say glass? No. Because it's covered with glass. It's covered with glass so it'll get a bit of shine or so, so food doesn't go in it as much or, or for whatever reason, right? But the main product is the what? Is the clay. Therefore, Betzalel said, if I take a wood, wooden box, cover it with gold, the ikar would become What? The main material would be what? The wood. But that's not what Hashem wants. That's not what Hashem wants. The gold has to be ikar. How do I make it so that the gold is the ikar, the, old, the gold is the main product? It has to be separate. The wood should not be covered by the gold, but I have to make two gold separate boxes, one box of wood, Put the gold box inside the wooden box. Put another gold box outside the wooden box. So it's really three boxes. They're individuals on their own. Why? Why? And he says, as we said, in Halakha also, the Rambam also says like this. The Maimani says in Halakha, <clears throat> In halachot of utensils and kelim and vessels, fourth perik, which which says what that the covering of a keli, the, uh, 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 um, or the plating of a keli of a vessel, eno metameh does not make anything tameh. Why? Because the covering of a vessel becomes batel to the vessel itself. It becomes secondary to the vessel itself as if it doesn't even exist. The main product is being covered by it. So it's nothing. It's like it doesn't even exist. The main vessel takes over. So if the inside is wood, it's still called a wooden vessel. You understand what the Rambam is saying? So here too, Betzalel was saying, if I cover the wood with gold, then the gold becomes insignificant to the wood. The wood becomes the main keli. Claro so far? Who said no? No one said no? Yeah, clear, okay. So there, Shebet Talmid Chacham Nami, 
when it comes to also a Talmid Chacham, Yihye mutar lo lehimashech achar hanaot gufaniot. So he says, the wood, the wooden box inside the Aron HaKodesh resembled the, the ta'avot of the physical, the physical desires of a person, of the Talmid Chacham. That's what he's saying. The wood that's on the inside, is, it resembles the physicality, physical desires of the person, of the Talmid Chacham. So he's saying, if the wood would be covered, only covered by gold, then it would seem like, hey, the main product is the wood. So the Talmid Chacham has a heter, he's mutar to go, you know, he's, he's, he's totally, totally, okay. it's totally okay for him to follow his desi- the desires of his heart, physical desires. And it's totally fine. Share, share ra'ui, shagufu ha'ikar. Why? Because the, then you're saying that the body, the physical body becomes the ikar. The wood becomes the main product. Because it's only covered by gold. So the wood is the main thing. The wood resembles physicality. Vahatsipui and the covering, hua tafel. That becomes secondary. And what's the gold? What's the gold? Gold resembles Torah and a person's midot, the characteristics, the golden characteristics, the golden Torah, the things that really matter, the precious stuff. If you take the wood and you make that the priority, then the gold becomes the, you know, a, a secondary object. That's telling the Talmud Chacham, follow your heart, follow your desires, it's fine. And the gold stuff, Torah, mitzvot, ma'asim, tovim, secondary. You know, good deeds, secondary. Learning Torah, secondary. Because after all, it's just a covering. It's not on its own. And if it was like this, the kavanas, the, the pasuk is saying, Ve'imachen, kach ha'ita kavanat ha'katuv, if actually the Torah meant it this way, that the Aaron should be made one, one, uh, one Aaron of wood, and it would be covered with gold, it would say that what? Mutar le Tamid Chacham, it would be mutar, would be completely permissible for Tamid Chacham um, to go after Tanu Gaguf, to go after all the pleasures of, of the body. Therefore, Hayal le Pasuk Lomar, the pasuk needed to say, "Va'asu Aaron atzeshitim, make an Aaron out of cedar wood, ve'tzipita oto and cover it zahav tahor with pure gold mibayit umichutz from inside and outside, and that's it. The pasuk should have stopped there. Take a wooden box, cover it from inside and outside with zahav tahor with pure gold. That's it, right? But the pasuk doesn't stop there." This is where the Chokhmah of Betzalel comes in. The fact that it says, the Pasuk actually says, Vasu Aron Atzeshitim, make an Aron out of cedar wood, Vetsipita Oto Zahav Tahor, and cover it with pure gold, Mibayit Umichutz, from inside and outside, Tetzapenu, cover it. It says, cover it again. Betzalel said, why is Hashem saying cover it twice? If you're telling me to gold play the wooden box, just say, cover the wooden box from inside and outside with gold. But it's saying, cover it from inside and outside with gold, cover it. He took from the second, second repetition of the word cover it, that there should be two golden boxes, separate from the wooden box. One for the outside and one for the inside. Shemamina, he learned from here. Shahat Sipui, that this covering, who davar, in itself, is a thing by itself. It's not just a covering. Mipne atzmo, it's something by itself, meaning it has priority. It's not coming here, the gold is not coming here just to be used as a covering, as a shield. It's got, it's, a, it's its own entity. Ve'esh lo shem bifne atzmo, and it has a name for itself. 
ואינו בטל לגבי הכלי, and it's not secondary to the wooden box. ולכן, and therefore, בצלאל did this, עשה בצלאל שלוש ארונות, he made three boxes. In order that the זהב should be by itself and not become secondary to the wood, Therefore, it should be a learning point for the Talmud Chacham, for the Tzaddik, for the righteous Jew, that their mitzvot and their ma'asim tovim, their good deeds, and their mitzvot that they do everything, should not be batel to their physical desires, should not come secondary to their physical desires. The exact opposite. The gold has to be pri- priority. The midot, the good deeds, the mitzvot have to be priority. That's the priority. Everything else is secondary. You need to be a good person. You need to learn Torah. You need to do mitzvot. And then, physicality of the world, yeah, okay. Obviously, everybody needs some physicality. You need to eat, you need to sleep, you need to do things, you need to have some pleasure in life, yes. But it's secondary. The Torah and mitzvot are always priority. And the reason why the Torah needed these three different aronot, three different boxes, separate from each other, and not actually attached to the piece of wood, was what? Shalif Amim, this is, this is where it gets very good, and it's a lesson for all of us, men and women alike. <clears throat> Sometimes, HaTalmid Chacham Tzarich, Shachanif L'Rasha, Ul Chabado, Sometimes, a, this is a very interesting way, I've never seen this before. This pasuk is talked about a lot by Mefarashim, but I had never seen this viewpoint. It's a very interesting viewpoint by the Zer Shon. Sometimes the Talmid Chacham, the Tzaddik, needs to kind of lower their head before the Rasha, before a wicked person. And give that wicked person kavod, respect. Sometimes it happens. Why? Machmat kegon for whatever reason, maybe he fears that person, or maybe he fears that they'll damage him somehow, he'll hurt him, the Rasha will hurt him, or the Rasha has power somehow, and he could hold people hostage, or whatever it could be. For whatever reason, the tzaddik, the righteous person, the Talmid Chacham, who should not have to bow to such a person, might have to actually social, show some favoritism to such a person. That's when the Talmud Chacham has to be what? Gold from inside, not from outside. Hold your outer looks of tzitkut, of righteousness, and, and, and your midot, hold them within. Don't show that. Don't show that you're a big shot of a Talmud Chacham. Put your respect aside and give in to the rasha if it means helping others, if it means helping yourself. Sometimes you might have to do that. Therefore, at that moment, that Tamit Chacham has to, be, has to decide, okay, today, at this moment, I'm only a Tamit Chacham on the inside, secretively. On the outside, I have to act like everybody else in order to get this guy's attention to help. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Do we understand what the Zerah Shimshon is trying to say? So he says, that's when, so he's trying to explain here, that's why, this is the, that's why the gold pieces are separate. Because they're different entities that resemble different things. So sometimes he needs to use the golden box inside only. When does he use the golden box inside, so to speak, only? That's when he has to show on the outside that he's just like everybody else. A great Talmud Chacham has to come up to some wicked person and be like, Hey buddy, what's up? How you doing? <laughs> like I'm, act like everybody else just to get the guy to like him. Maybe he needs something from him. And it's the only way to get it. And he has to put himself down to do so. <clears throat> and it shouldn't be showing on the outside. And therefore he says, Therefore, omit levado. This golden box has to stand by itself, not attached to anything. And it's not attached to the wooden part either, because the golden box by itself resembles something of its own. Inami, and therefore, 
Sometimes it's the exact opposite also. The opposite could be true. Shamur Rabotenu Zichraim Rabacha, that our rabbis have said this before in the Gemara in Pesachim. Gemara, it's, it's brought down this Gemara Pesachim Nun Amud Bet. Le'olam Ya'asuk Adam Torah Mitzvot Afilu Shelo Lishma. This is so, so important. It's so crucial, especially in our day and age, and I'll tell you why. And you will all agree with me. If you don't, I don't care. A person, le'olam ya'asok adam betoro mitzvot afilu shelo lishma. A person should always practice Torah and mitzvot, do, learn Torah, do mitzvot, afilu shelo lishma. Even for the wrong reasons. Even not for the sake of heaven. Even not for the sake of the Torah learning. You know what? You find out about a program that says, I'll pay you $100 a week. Come sit down and learn. I'll, $100 a week. Who's going to do that? I'll pay you $100 a day if you come and learn one hour. Come learn one hour, you get $100 cash money. $100 for one hour. Now, it's an easy $100 for one hour. Who wouldn't do it? You go have your breakfast there and there's food. You go have breakfast. You sit down to listen to a Mishnayot or something. Somebody's talking, you know. And right before you go out by the door, they'll give you $100 cash. You walk out. Every day. <clears throat> wouldn't, wouldn't that be an amazing deal? So a guy does this. Is that a bad thing? He's only doing it for the money. He's going, learning Torah, only for the money. Because he's getting $100 per hour. So he's saying here, the Gemara says, Le'olam, always remember, Ya'asok adam b'Torah mitzvot, do Torah and mitzvot, afilu shelo lishma. Even if it's for the wrong reasons, even if it's not for Hashem, even if you're not doing it for the mitzvah of learning Torah, you're doing it because you're getting paid. You're doing it because it looks good. You're doing it because you're trying to, I don't know, uh, appease somebody. For whatever reason. You're not doing it for the Torah. But don't let that hold you back. The az, <clears throat> Because when you do learn Torah, when you're learning Torah, Shelo Lishma, for the wrong purpose, for the wrong reason, who's zahav mi bachutz? That becomes that golden box on the outside. It's only on the outside, it's not on the inside. On the outside, you're doing a mitzvah. On the outside, you're learning Torah. It's not on the inside, you're not doing it for the right reasons. Your heart's not in it, your heart's not in the right place, you're looking for the money. On the outside, you're learning Torah. So that's the outer box of the Aron. That's also okay. That's also good. The Gemara is saying, do it. You have the opportunity, do it. It's fine. Even though from the inside it's not. Why? Because our Chachamim tell us, Mitoch shelo lishma, ba lishma. Torah has immense amount of power. Torah has incredible power. When you learn Torah, it speaks to your neshama whether you like it or not. Whether you're doing it for money or you're doing it because you're going to get a free trip to Israel so you have to go to these 10 sessions before you go. So you sit there going, ah, this is a free trip to Israel and I'm going to go to Europe with my friends. You know how many people's lives have changed from those 10, ten sessions when they thought, <laughs> I want to get a free trip to Israel. This guy's sitting here meh, 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 for hours. I don't know why they do this, but I'm okay with it. And the guy's a rav now in Kolel for the past five years, and it all started from 10 sessions that they had to do in order to go to Israel for free. When you learn Torah for the wrong reasons, it'll by itself bring you to do it for the right reasons. Because the Torah will gravitate your neshama towards it because it's emet. It's the truth. It'll cleanse you. It'll help you understand. It'll bring you forward. That's how you have the outer box. The outer box had to be separate also. Because sometimes you can also learn Torah only on the outside, not on the inside. But don't worry. It'll bring the inside too. Do it. That's why the outer box had to be separate. And today this is so important. 
Because I know many people that use this excuse. Many people. Why don't you do X, Y, and Z? It's so easy for you. You've done it before. I don't know. It just, I feel like such a hypocrite doing it. You know, I can do it, but like I don't keep anything else. You know, so I do this. What you want me to put tefillin every day when when I'm when I'm like whatever. You know, I'm gonna be clubbing that night. You know, what? Why should I wear tefillin if I'm gonna be clubbing at night? It's it's such hypocrisy. That's not how the Torah works. The outer box resembles that person. That's what the outer box resembles. It's okay. You have the opportunity to do a mitzvah. You know how great that mitzvah is? It's like every time you do it, imagine you're saving somebody's life. You wouldn't do it. You would say, it's such hypocrisy. I saved this person's life. Maybe tomorrow I won't be able to save anybody's life. I'm no hero. (laughs) Why should I save this guy's life now? You know what I mean? You have an opportunity to do a great mitzvah right now. Take that opportunity right now. Don't worry, no one's going to judge you and be like, and if they do, they're wrong. They're going to look at you and go, huh, look at that. That guy was out drinking with me in so-and-so club. Look at him put on tefillin right now. Yeah, what are you doing? At least he's got one thing going right for him before he does everything else wrong. What do you got? Does it make sense? It's been so many times that I've seen Rabbi Gottlieb you should be well, Adne Ave Esrim. Told us a story one time about a, a kid that came to him, <clears throat> you know, Or Sameach, is a yeshiva that has changed, I could say, millions of lives. And, and it changes lives every day. So people go to Or Sameach, write that name down, because it's going to be an important name for you. Because in that place, people from all walks of life walk in. And they have questions about things. So Rabbi Gottlieb told me one time, he was in a class, and he said, a kid had come, and, and he found the truth. He wanted to follow the Torah. But he had a problem. He wanted to become Shomer Shabbat, but he had a problem. Every fo- football game was on Saturdays. And he was a crazy football fan. So he came to Rabbi Gottlieb and asked him, he said, I, I, I'd like to. I think it's a great thing. But listen, I got to watch my football. I have to watch my football. How do I give up on football on Saturdays? What did he tell him? He said, is there, is there a game on Friday nights? He said, no. He said, all right. Keep Friday nights. Only keep Friday night. You're a Friday night Jew. Imagine that. Imagine telling somebody, only keep Friday night, Shabbat day. Go to the mall, come back, watch. I mean, you wouldn't tell, you wouldn't tell someone that. But I'm saying, that's what the kid is t- thinking to himself. You know, Friday night, I'm going to be at a Shabbat table, make Kiddush. Sabri maranan <laughs> You know? And then do Lechadodi, go to Bet Knesset, come home, sit around. Devar Torahs, after Devar Torah. You know what the parsha says? That, you know, and what parsha do we have today? It's Parashat Yitro. All right, let's go through the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill, that or not. Bet Shabbat totai tishmoru. And keep my Shabbat. Ah, I love the Torah. Can't wait to watch the game tomorrow. You know, come Saturday morning, you're watching the game. Now the Satan will tell you, you're such a hypocrite. Look at you, last night. Rabbi Gottlieb said, you know what happened? He started keeping Shabbat on Friday nights. And he was watching the game on Saturdays. One month, two months, three months. Then he didn't want to watch the game anymore. He enjoyed Shabbat much more than the game. And he started keeping Shabbat. And he started keeping everything. That's how Kedusha works. If you let it in, it helps you. You can't see the light in the beginning. It's like it never ends. But it's there. We're just clouded. We don't see it in the beginning. Do whatever it takes. Whatever you can. Whatever mitzvah it is, do that one. Don't feel like a hypocrite. Do that one. That'll help you in life. You can keep kashrut to a certain degree. Do that. You can keep Shabbat to a certain degree. Do that. If you don't keep Shabbat yet, you can tell yourself, you know what, Friday nights, no phones. You start with that. 
I know many people that do that. And it helps. It's a great mitzvah. Like I said, imagine you're saving a life. Would you let up the opportunity to save a life? Who would do that? Who would let up the opportunity of saving an, a, a, a neshama? A life of a person. <clears throat> she says, Belif Amin, back to the Zerah Shimshon. Sometimes, the Talmid Chacham, who tov v'na'im gam bifnim. He's good also on the inside. V'gam b'chutz. And also on the outside. There's times that you have the Talmid Chacham, he's good on the outside and on the inside. We talked about the outside only. We talked about the inside only. Now we're talking about outside and inside. <clears throat> Just like all the chachamim and the tzadikim. And then, the, quite the opposite, rather. When that person becomes kulo Torah, his entire being becomes Torah and mitzvot, meaning he's gold on the outside like the Aaron, and gold on the inside, then what happens? The wood becomes batel. The wood part becomes completely tafel. It becomes secondary as if it doesn't even exist. What happens? Their physicality, their physical pull, their desires, their physical desires completely give in to Kedusha. And we've seen that. There's so many tzaddikim in the world that have no desire to do wrong anymore. They have no desire for lust. They have no desire for uh, 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 different you know, things that we might be like, oh, I wish I could do that. Oh, I wish I could eat that. I, could show, I wish I could go there. There are tzaddikim that have no desire. What happened? What happened was the, the inner gold and the outer gold took over. And the wood becomes the secondary particle. The physical body becomes secondary. The Baba Saleh, Allah wa Shalom. He said about the Baba Saleh, he used to eat once a week food. He used to eat once a week. How, do you do, how does a physical body do that? And he, and, and, and he was old. What happens is that you become totally like a malach. Your spiritual self can take over. You become a completely spiritual person. It was just a Hilula of the Baba Saleh, it was just his yard site. And the stories, they never end of the miracles that he did. The things that he did, it's like physical, natural world that did not apply to him. It did not apply to him. Why? Because he was such a spiritual person. He was already in the realm of gold inside, gold outside. There's no physicality. Physicality doesn't exist. I'll just give you one example that I, I, I happen to have heard personally from Harav Al-Fasi Shalom, who was the Baba Salih Shamash, who was his right-hand man for many years. And we asked him this question, and he answered, because we had heard rumors. We had heard rumors that the Baba Sali, you could search this also, he would have a lot of guests at his table. And he had a minhag that he would serve his guests himself, whatever he could. And they would have like a bottle of arak or alcohol for l'chaim. He would wrap this bottle with a towel and he would pour for every single guest in his home, sometimes hundreds, from one bottle. And then when he would put the bottle down, the towel would fall and it was full. The bottle was full. This is a very famous story from the Baba Salim. So, you know, there's a lot of righteous people, there's stories that are made up about them, you know. People, people like the, the whole story of telephone, you know. You say one thing, it turns into hundreds of different, it becomes a totally different story at the end. So when we had the opportunity to have Alav Shalom, Rav al Fasi, his shamash, we asked him. He laughed. When we asked him, he started laughing. He's like, that was child's play. That was nothing. Like that was on a daily basis. These things did not apply to him. Natural law and order didn't apply to him. You pour water from a bottle, it'll decrease. That's the natural world. That's, that's the law of the natural world. But he wasn't, he wasn't living in this realm anymore. So to him was, who says the bottle has to be empty? 
you know. I read another story about him just recently. He was driving in a cab and he sees like a, 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 a truck, a soda company truck or something like that or a drink company truck or van passing and he, and he tells his driver, he says, honk for the driver next to you and ask him if you give me a bottle of water. So he honks and he says, can you please spare a bottle of water or soda or whatever it is for the rabbi, old, old rabbi here. He says, no, what are you talking about? What do you mean? What do you think I'm giving bottles out for my truck? The old day drives up. Next red light, he says, ask him again. Ask him again. Can you give me something? Right? He says, okay. He says, can, can you please, sir? He says, no. Okay. They leave. They drive down. They see a huge accident. This truck had gotten into an accident and unfortunately the person passed away. So they asked the Baba Sali, like, what was the story? He says, I saw the Malach Hamavit on top of this car. I had an opportunity to get him to do a mitzvah, to do one good deed, and it would have made him go away. He didn't want to do it. I tried to save his life. When I read the story, you know, it makes you think. It really makes you think to always take the opportunity to do something right. Small or big, never let the opportunity you know, escape your fingertips, whatever it might be, even if it is giving a cup of water to somebody. Getting back to this. So he says, now that Sadiq, his entire being becomes spirituality, from inside and outside, gold, and that takes over his physicality. He's no longer in the physical realm. <clears throat> Because his thoughts and his heart from inside and his actions on the outside, they're all great. From inside and outside, he's great. And therefore, because from the inside and outside, everything is golden, that pulls up the physical wooden inside box. So that the wooden inside box no longer matters. Because of this, Betzalel, made three different boxes. Because sometimes the person needs to only use one of them. So they have to be separate. Sometimes a tzaddik needs to only show his tzitkut on the inside. Sometimes some people could only have the tzitkut and righteousness on the outside. And that's okay also. And then the other scenario is that the two sides work together to elevate the physical inner body. All three have to be separate entities in order for this to work. Therefore, B'Tzalel and his Chokhmah decided, I have to make this, this Aron, not like anybody else would understand, to take a piece of wood and just cover it with gold. No. These have to be separate entities. The gold on the outside represents outside characteristics. The gold on the inside represents the inside inner thoughts and characteristics on the inside of a person. A person's real self, his personality, his true self. And the wood represents his physicality. What does he do with that physicality? That's up to him. And that's why he made it into three. And he says, and this does not mean that a person should deprive their physical self. No, 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 no. As it says, he brings down. <clears throat> As he says, where we go? Okay, sorry. <coughs> you have to take pleasure out of the things that God has created in this world to the limit, obviously, with its guidelines. Why? Because it says in Yerushalmi. A person's going to be obligated to, to pass judgment before HaKadosh Baruch Hu and answer back on the fact that he saw great creations of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, let's say in food product and he didn't eat. Meaning, if the person had an opportunity to eat grapes, had an opportunity to have pomegranates, had an opportunity to have apples and he didn't. As an example, after 120 years, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to show him an apple and be like, 
Look at what I created. It's magnificent. It's beautiful. You know how much went into this being born? It's magnificent. Did you ever try it? And the person says, no. And Shem says, how dare you? I created this for you. I created this so that you can eat it and bless me and thank me for me creating such beautiful things. And you dared not take pleasure in it? How dare you? That's what the Gemara says. The Gemara says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu has created all the good things that we're allowed to use for our pleasure to use them with limitations. And if we don't and we deprive ourselves of it, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to not want to know why. And we better have a good answer. So the Zerashim Shon is saying, don't think that we're saying, don't follow any of your physical desires. No, there's limitations on everything. HaKadosh Baruch Hu has given physical desires for a reason too, with its limitations. You could enjoy life with limits. Don't go too far. That's okay also. But what's the priority? The question here is, what do you make the priority? Do you make the priority all those physical pleasures only, or your spirituality? And the answer has to be spirituality. Your spiritual self has to be the priority. Everything else, the physical stuff, is secondary. And they're okay also. He says, therefore, Bechen. <clears throat> so he says, therefore, it's good also that in the beginning, when a person may be just trying to become better in life, in the beginning, their physicality will be a little bit more stronger. Therefore, like we said in the scenario of the person doing it, mitoch shelo lishma balishma, when he's doing it for the wrong reasons, okay, his physical self is still stronger. So, okay, he'll be going to the, those shiurim, he'll be eating the lunch over there or the breakfast over there, and he'll get to be getting $100. So he's feeding his physical self while he's learning Torah on the outside only. It says, but over there too, they're working hand in hand. He's feeding his physical self, thinking to himself, I'm only doing this for my inner, for my physical desires. I'm here for the money. But he says, at the end of the day, the kedusha will take over. The gold will take over. And that's okay also. That's what the Zerah Shimshon is saying. So that, that to encapsulate everything. Therefore, Betzal El in his Chochmah understood that when HaKadosh Baruch Hu is telling him to build the Aron HaKodesh, repeating the word, cover it with gold, the, the uh, Betzalel understood that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is telling him, since the Talmid Chacham, since the Aron is going to resemble a Talmid Chacham at Sadiq, it's going to resemble him in all its aspects and its, all, all its forms from beginning to the end. And therefore, Betzalel understood that these golden parts have to be separate from the wooden parts. Because there's different levels of righteousness. There's different times that a person has to be righteous on the outside or on the inside or both. Therefore, he understood that the Aron, if it's going to resemble the perfect human being, and has to be divided into three different compartments. And it's an important lesson for us not to look down upon ourselves, to take every opportunity to do mitzvot, even if it's just on the outside. Never shame ourselves or never call ourselves hypocrites if there's some things that we can keep and some things that we can't. We, the Torah is, is not something that is a package deal. It's a package deal to accept, but it's not a package deal to do. You can't say, you know, oh, well, you know, since I can't do this or that, I won't do anything. You can't say that. You should do whatever you can. However, to say, Chas v'shalom, you know, I only do this mitzvah, I only keep kosher, but I don't keep Shabbat. Why? Because I don't believe in Shabbat. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's lies. That's asur. It's okay to accept that Shabbat is the truth and you're just not there yet. It's okay to accept that kosher is the truth, you're just not there yet. Do other things. Other things that you can handle, do those little by little, take baby steps. But to say, chas v'shalom, you know why I don't do kosher? Because I think it's a lot of garbage. That becomes a lose-lose situation, chas v'shalom. 
ברוך אדוני לעולם, אמן ואמן.